Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Benedict Construction. You live in your home, you sleep in your home, you eat in your home. You spend holidays in your home, snow days in your home, summer days in your home. Shouldn't your home then be your dream home? Shouldn't it be the perfect place? Shouldn't you just be overjoyed, huge smile on your face when you get home at night? You can make it so. Nobody does custom remodel jobs like Benedict Construction. Get in touch with them this week. Benedict Construction. And over at the Benedict Construction Big Board, we think that Tennessee, Mark, you made this point in January. Mike, I think you made this point as well, that you know the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee normally doesn't say, well, we're going to take X teams from a conference. But oftentimes, you can kind of guess how many bids a conference is going to get. And you're probably looking, if you're Tennessee and you're wanting that, that last bid in, you probably need to jump over Arkansas. Well, we've put their two resumes up there side by side. Overall record, you see that Arkansas is better. Arkansas better in the SEC. The RPI, that's from RPI forecast, and it's, it is correct. It just came out on the NCAA. Tennessee RPI dropped from 47 to 50 with that win yesterday. Arkansas went from 37 to 33 with their win yesterday over what, Ole Miss? They beat Ole Miss yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Pomeroy, I uh, screwed that up. Tennessee is at 43. Arkansas is at 51, I think, the strength of schedule. Tennessee 9 and Arkansas, forget what that is. I didn't do my Photoshop right. Anyway, your RPI for Tennessee's got the better strength of schedule. Uh, RPI forecast top 50 wins. Tennessee has Kentucky. Arkansas has Texas Arlington, Texas, South Carolina, and the Vols. And there you see the remaining schedule. Both have two home, two away. Uh, Mark Pankratz, do you still believe that if Tennessee's going to get in this tournament, they're going to need to catch up or pass Arkansas in terms of resume? Yeah, I believe so. And, you know, the bubble has been so fluid. There was a lot of teams that lost yesterday. If, if Tennessee goes and wins the remaining games and Arkansas goes and wins their games, that you could end up with both of we them could. in there. But, but yes, if there's going to be the one, Arkansas has positioned himself with Georgia, ended up having a bad lo or a loss that they uh, got yesterday to Kentucky. Auburn loses. Van All your bubble teams lost. Uh, Arkansas is the only one that's still there. Which means Bruce Pearl could come back and help Tennessee a little bit if he could knock off Arkansas uh, next Saturday. Arkansas has got a tough schedule at Florida as well and Georgia, depending on the, the, the health of their team. They the, had them injuries yesterday. This is the perfect debate of, you know, on the court versus computer. I mean, right now the, the sports so much are going to the technological side of statistics. If you look up on your board, Tennessee's winning, winning all the rankings, but they don't have the wins in the win-loss column. Um, Arkansas has done that. Uh, but it's going to be a tough matchup here down the stretch. The NCAA selection committee's also talked about using new measurements, new tools in the in this year and years ahead in terms of how to pick these teams. Would you be in favor of that, or do you think there's too much weight on numbers at this point? I think I think you need some level of numbers, but at the end of the day, the thing that's going to kill Tennessee at the end of it is it, that that loss versus Arkansas. Yeah. You had it. You had that win. If you could have that feather in your cap, you'd feel even much better. Uh, if you were faced up ar with Arkansas. The thing that worries me is you just have one good win on the year. You've got a bunch of good losses. The Kansas State win was a good win, but apparently they've dropped, uh, faded out of the top 50. They're yeah. between 50 and 60, and there's another one in there that Tennessee has between 50 and 60. I forget who it is. Uh, John, to your, to your point about metrics, I'll just give you some background on Mark Collins, who's the Michigan State Athletic Director who heads up this NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. In his coaching search for Mark D'Antonio, they used 300 metrics in determining who their next head football coach would be. Hollis is a metrics guy. And that's the guy who's running the selection committee Correct. this time so around. So good for Tennessee. Very good. It could <laughs> be, yes. Could be. All right, Mark, thank you. We'll see you in overtime. We've got a great question. Chuck Cavalera sent us an overtime question, and we'll put Mark into that. We'll tell you what it is a little bit later. But when we come back, who would we hire as AD? Taking out the outsiders. If it's just down to Blackburn or Fulmer, who should it be? Come on back.